Hello once again folks, it's I believe day 10, yes the 10th one on that list of spoiler season and today's a bit of a weird one, it's not quite a normal reveal, it's a selection of numerous different small quality of life changes and these are just for leagues, it's not changes to the main game but there's a few various nice different little things in here so let's just take a look. Alright the first one, rocks, trees, respawnable items and main world NPCs will respawn faster than the main game, three times in most cases and much higher in other cases such as runite rocks. This is great, it should make competition for resources at the the start of leagues and throughout just a little less of an issue if you're in a really popular zone then you're less likely to be hindered by other players just constantly being around you so it's a great change all of these are nice things you can't be mad at any of them the second one everyone will now be able to purchase a max cape from the sage in lumbridge upon reaching 2277 total level i'm hype about this i maxed last year during leagues but i didn't get the max cape because i didn't have asgarnia and this change is awesome being able to get a max cape i've never had one before so i'm looking forward to wearing my first one this leagues for sure the third one here we've been sort of speculating about this for a while as how it was going to be accessed because they've been saying the drop rates are boosted and whatnot. Tommen demons will be accessible without needing to complete while Guthic sleeps, meaning the only requirement is acquiring a sapphire lantern. So we should be able to go and kill Tormen demons from level 47 fire making I guess. The fourth one, instances have been created for Cerberus, Sarachnus and Thermi. We have also removed the timer when attempting to enter a Dagonoff King's instance shortly after leaving. This is great, this means you, again it's like the first one, not having to compete with other players for resources and being shafted because you picked a popular area. Good stuff. This fifth one, bit of a non-update at least to me because I don't participate in clans. Clans can now toggle shared leagues related broadcasts including Relic, Area, Rank and Combat Mastery achievements. They will be clearly different from normal broadcasts with the league symbol next to the players names. I'm sure some people are happy about this kind of a, a nothing one to me personally but yep that's in there this one rather than receiving a twisted bow from chambers of Zeric, scythe from theater or shadow from tombs you'll instead receive a mega rare voucher which can be given to the sage in lumbridge for the weapon of your choice very cool so you're not going to go dry on the item that you actually want you'll get a bit of selection here in terms of the most powerful potential weapon you could have for your account which is nice because it means that you get to pick the weapon of your primary style rather than getting the wrong one and then being t6 in a combat mastery that you don't have the mega rare for great change love to see it hopefully i get a mega rare voucher this league because i can't remember i think i had a shadow i think i got a shadow last league i didn't complete my mazori but i think i got a shadow eventually anyway zora is no longer immune to melee damage and has no damage cap meaning melee weapons that can reach are viable this means the new salamander from zaya will be viable halberds will be viable i think does the scythe have extra reach i don't know because i've never swung one but i'm sure it probably does if so that's viable if not oh well i'm wrong very cool and another small one just for the Fremenic region this time rather than the, the elf region. Potions and ingredients sourced during the Duke Succulus fight will no longer be removed from your inventory when waking Duke. This is fantastic because I know last time I was in Fremenic and I know a lot of people are picking it this time as well and that did take the piss. If you've never fought Duke before like you have to run to get these different ingredients and make a potion at the start of each fight and you have to boil it up in this vat and then go use the two potions on him to start the fight and you can't like make extras and keep them in, in your inventory because it resets when he does so you have to go and gather new ones every time now no longer the case you'll be able to gather as many of the little potions as you want in one go and then wake duke up and kill him over and over and over very cool and finally pet cosmetic overrides are now carried over between leagues, including any you might have locked in Trailblazer Reloaded, but not prior leagues. Yeah, I'm sure that matters 
to some people. It doesn't to me, because I don't have any right now, but if I get one, I'm sure I'll be happy about it, so I'm not complaining. I'm just, uh, I'm waiting to, I actually have the Duke pet. I got that last week, along with the uh, Abyssal Wanderer, but the Duke pet, definitely the one I'm gonna be having following me around on day one. Yeah, all nice little changes today, nothing too major, but some things we've been speculating about for a while, like Wargothic sleeps for the Tormented Demons, and how exactly Raid Mega Rares were gonna be given to us, and like, what if you've got the wrong one? Good to know about this stuff, nice to know about things respawning quicker, about having less competition because there's instances. These are all very positive changes, and uh, I'm happy with the updates today. I will say I'm not happy with how they gave us the updates. They drip-fed them through Twitter, begging for likes, to get the next mini-reveal, and I don't appreciate being forced towards using a service that Elon Musk is behind, so I'd prefer you don't do that, Jagex. Like, just give us the reveal. You've got your own website with a page for putting it. You could have literally just uploaded this without all the Twitter bullshit, and people would have been happier about it. Anyway, mini ran over. The quality of life changes are really nice to have. There's one other thing I just want to mention in this video as well, because I haven't mentioned it previously. They did release, and these are subject to change, but currently these are the points and tasks that are available in each region for this leagues. Uh, this was posted by Mod Arcane in the leagues groups, one of the main guys behind leagues, so it's, you know, coming straight from the horse's mouth, so to speak. No offense, Arcane. <laughs> Obviously, we'll see Mislin and Karamja having less than the other regions, but overall, there's not that much of a gap here. Kandarin is the lowest. Sorry to all you Kandarin lovers. I know there's at least two of you this league that wanted to do Kandarin before it got absolutely shoved into a bin. But it's not that far behind. And the thing is, like, Mauritania has more? Sure. Corrand has more? Sure. By, like, a thousand in each case. So does Desert. But that's because they have raids, and a lot of that is going to be locked behind high-level uniques that a lot of players just want access to. Players in Kandarin don't have to do any of that. They get all their points easily. Like, the hardest task in Kandarin is probably gonna be to get a scarf from the gnome restaurant delivery, and I'm not bullshitting y'all. That, that, that was a task that took the piss last year, but I fucking did it, even if it took me like 12 hours. Just reliving that pain. Thank god I'm not in Kandarin again this year. Anyway, I thought it was worth just throwing this up here and pointing it out to y'all. Yeah, they, they seem fairly balanced. I'm not mad about the distribution at all. I'm looking forward to seeing what the tasks are. It's great to see that they've managed to find so many tasks in Valamore to make it competitive with the other regions. It's not going to fall behind. And um, yeah, that is going to be all for this one, folks. So make sure you hit that like button. Stay tuned for the future reveals by subscribing too if you haven't already. I'm excited that now we have the combat masteries that can start to make some proper concrete plans and hopefully we get more of the task re list released soon, especially the general and mistling Karamja. If we, uh, last year we got that at least like two days before the league started, maybe a bit earlier. I would imagine it may be the last thing they release as part of this spoiler season, so look out for that because after that gets released, the like starting zone task lists i'll be having multiple different routes for each of your tier one relic differences going forward including my own route i'm gonna be trying to go for day one huey y'all and i've got a tiny bit of a plan together for it but when i say a tiny bit of a plan i mean kill a hill giant kill 10 greater demons unlock valor <laughs> get protection prayers and, and then i need 48 slayer so start thinking about that give us all some hammers kill scorius and then we're off to huey that's the plan for day one if anyone wants to join in let me know in the comments i would love to have you along for the huey geddon madness i'm sure it's going to be fantastic and i will have a, a full video just on that once we have more of a concrete plan to give so that i can present it to you all that's it from me Look after yourselves, be lovely to one another, and I'll see you on the next one.